Uh, the first one is the Global Care Service. Basically, what it does is it provides fire and incident to incident blood transfer, and it also uh, it's also responsible for cash coherency. Again, um, what basically this is saying is that um, is basically if you have blocks of data being transferred, blocks of blocks being transferred from one instance to the next. Uh, again, that allows for you have we have re readability, accessibility to the user. So, and then you, again, you, there's a consistency um, to that data that's being that's being read by the different by the end user. And then the next global the next uh, caching service is a uh, global end user service. Basically, what it does is it provides blocking mechanisms uh, inside of inside of uh, inside inside of the rack environment. And it's also uh, in the past we it was referred to as the dynamic lock manager, or DL DLM. And the next uh, service, the next category of service is actually the the, uh, the global resource directory. So basically, it's a mini database uh, that's located on each instance, on each uh, on each node. And what it does is it stores the inf it stores the information on the block buffers. It stores information um, such as the location, the mode, or the role. Uh, and then the last uh, service, the last noble service is the private ISP interconnect. Again, what it does is provide it provides uh, synchronization of instances, um, and therefore it allows for in an in enable with the cache fusion. So uh, that's the basis of uh, of cache fusion. You know the fact that all those nodes can be synchronized, synchronized at the same time, and they can share all these all the different uh, resources. And I'm gonna go back now to. This, di this diagram. So in this diagram, I have a. Um, if you look at if you look at what I have up here, I have the the global echo service. Uh, again, this is the locking. This is the one that provides that's responsible for locking me mechanisms within within the uh, within the within the, the rack environment. And then this is the Google Cache service. This is the one that's uh, responsible for the transfer of the uh, buffer, the, uh, the, the, the the buffer from instance to instance, the cache transfer of the buffer. Again, so what happens here is that you have um, you have a different different uh, partners that, that are associated with these with these uh, services, and uh, so this service is actually the um, the log manage log manage manager service that uh, server uh, process. I'm gonna cover that in a in a um, in in, an, in an upcoming slide. This is the um, the L. Yeah, I can't I can't remember the name right now, but I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna cover this one. I'm gonna cover all all three of these services. And just so you guys can see, uh, what happens is that uh, basically the, uh, you have the communication with the uh, with the instance. So the database writer is actually again if you look at the diagram, uh, database writer is is um is going to this um is going to the uh, log manager manage manage service process. Uh, and basically, it's, uh, what it's doing is it's actually it's actually at the same time that the database writer is looking at the buff cache, it's actually looking at the buff cache as well. And then what's going on is that it this it's taking this information and then transferring it over to the um to the uh to you know basically like to the other node. And then um and then again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna cover these these all these functions in a uh, in the upcoming uh, slide. Okay, and then so the first one is actually the, the first resource I'm gonna cover is the global resource directory. Uh, so basically, as I've already told you guys, it's a repository that's stored in every node. Um, so basically, what it does is it keeps track of the block buffer location, the inventory, the data structure. Um, so uh, and it also uh, is kept is kept. Up to that, it was maintained by the global care service or and the and the global mm -hmm. service. So basically, um, what you have is just picture it this way. Uh, inside, inside, uh, inside every node. I don't have a picture of a node of an instance right now, but yeah, maybe I can use this one. So inside every node, what you have is you have a special a special place. Again, that's the that's the GRD, the global the global visual directory. It's a special it's a special mini database, and it has all the all the um, information on uh, on everything I just went over the buff on the on the buffer buffer um, buff block location. 
so uh, pretty much you know that's just um, I'm not I'm not too sure like how 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 much it plays into in terms of you know um, usability but basically uh, you know that's I think that's one of the ways that Oracle ensures that you know each each node has access to um, um, basically uh, um, you know consistent data and then the next the next uh, service is actually the Global Cache Service, or it's also referred to as the GCS. Basically, this is the benefit to the backbone of Cache Fusion and our Cache Domain Coherence. Uh, again, uh, coherence um, is referring to the repeatability and consistency in, in data. Uh, so basically, it's again, it's responsible for the data buffers, um, tensile data buffers across its entrances, um, and also for different types of block modes. Um, the processes that, 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 uh, that are associated with this service is or the uh, is the uh, the lock manager service uh, process. Uh, basically, uh, what it does is it's again it's responsible for remote messaging, and uh, you can have you can have up to ten of these uh, processes. It's basically labeling, labeling. If you look at the end, this is where you have the the, the, the label for that process. So it's, it's you can label them from zero to nine. So uh, and again, it's up to ten. So zero being the first one. And then um, the GCS server proxy is the parameter that you use uh, to set um, this process. So again, LMS is this one, the red one that's directly um, basically um, connected, or oh, basically that's that's reading into the data the, into the bucket cache. And then the, the next service is the global NQ service. Again, it's basically responsible for the locking mechanism uh, and cache fusion. Uh, you, it's in, in previous vision, Oracle it was referred to as the, uh, uh, the dynamic lock manager. Um, basically, uh, what it does is it, dy it dynamically assigns um, the title of a resource master to an instance. So basically, um, again, I'm going to go into the concept of resource master later on. But basically, it's just you know, in terms of uh, direct environment, like one resource, or one one instance that you know has to have its title, and that's what uh, the Google Cloud Service uh, does. Is that it assigns that title to a particular node. Um, this process that's associated with um, this service is the lock uh, monitor process or LMON. Basically, it's responsible for uh, cl the cluster monitoring and uh, management of global resources. Uh, also, global resources are in in in, in Rack are also referred to as cluster group services. Um, basically, again, this is a very important point. It's responsible for the monitoring of global resources, but it's not responsible for monitoring management of data bit data buffer blocks. Only for only for global resources. Um, that's a that's a that's a very uh, big distinction. Um, and also, uh, the next uh, process. Um, uh, that's used by the by the services the uh, LMD again um, LMD zero the lock manager daemon process basically is responsible for the management of resource requests from node so basically again you know you have let's say you have a two three node environment um, basically the, the LMD is going to be responsible for just ensuring that um, if you have if you have one node that's trying to get access to a uh, particular um, set of uh, this particular you know uh, buffer buffer block, um, what's going to happen is that the lock manager is going to basically uh, sort of like um, create a locking mechanism for that uh, for that access until you're done uh, with uh, with your with, with you know with with your activity. Um, and then the another another um, thing that it does is this um, it's also um, it's responsible for uh, the distributed deadlock detection. Uh, again, this goes back to um, basically uh, having a lock in a a um, a, um, a a lock uh, a lock so like a um, a lock mechanism or a lock um, a a a, a <laughs> so think okay, so it goes back to just the to the to the, just you to to that to uh, data contention to block contention. 
So if you have multiple users on different instances and they want to access a particular uh, uh, data uh, buffer block, so again, this is you. You might have it at time. You might have a um, you know one of one of a deadlock um, a deadlock um, occurrence where basically you know there's a contention. What it what the deadlock manager does is is the it's, it's gonna basically ensure that whoever whoever had access to that um, to that uh, block is completely done before the other person can have access. It basically it eliminates the, the contention uh, to the buffer block. And also, it's responsible for processing of NQ requests. Again, um, basically, again, this this goes back to um, you know uh, certain blocks being blocked, be, being uh, locked. Um, and um, basically reserved for a particular user, um, um, you know, particular session, and then it's also responsible for access control to to global NQ. So basically, again, this just goes back to um, you know uh, resources. Uh, uh, basically, you know, uh, and I if you have uh, again, if you have you know, uh, if you have much professional on different nodes. Um, it's just gonna monitor traffic uh, to that uh, particular uh, buffer block. And then if I take you back, you guys back to the diagram. Again, these are the different processes. Um, so basically, um, let me just make sure. And then, okay, let's manage the damn process. So yeah, so basically, again, uh, these two, these two. Uh, services and then this service as well so these services are part of the node and as you guys can see what's going on is that you know it's just taking all the information collecting all the information and just you know taking it to um you know taking it straight to uh, the other nodes um uh again and then event and then eventually basically it's gonna it's gonna uh you know that that's the way that you that you will start you know you got it when you're able to retrieve the data all because of these processes and these services. And now in terms of uh, in terms of cache fusion again, um, the performance efficiency of cache fusion is actually uh, is uh, is going to actually be based on um, on what or what's referred to as waiting events. Uh, two events that you need to look out for are the, are the global cache service weights and the cross instance block transfer weights. Basically, based on these uh, weights or these waiting events, you'll be able to tell um, how efficient your um, your, your uh, communication is, you know, in your rack environment. And also, these are just some of the important parameters uh, that you. Um, that you would actually not parameters, but dynamic, just, just be more, um, you know, be more, you know, be more clear. These are dynamic performance views that you need to monitor in in your uh, in your cache fusion environment. Um, basically, um, again, uh, V is for a uh, standalone standalone um, dynamic, dynamic performance view, and GV stands for the global view of that performance view. So. Um, basically, um, back here you have uh, V dollar cash transfer, and this is only for this is for to look at the, at the cash transfer performance view for you know for particular for your instance. And if you wanted to look at the overall um, overall the overall um, standing overall value for uh, this um, standing, this uh, performance view, what you would do is you would just put in it's you know the G before the V and it's gonna give you the overall uh, look at that at that performance view. Again, um these are just some of the, the you know the basic things to know about cache fusion. Um and it, again um you guys would um basically just um be able to better understand these as we are practicing them um you know on your own local software. Uh thanks a lot for watching.